Welcome back everybody, so my next movie review for you is Twister, but before I get into this movie review, once again, if you like watching my reviews, could you please like, share, or subscribe to my channel, it would be very, very much appreciated. So, Twister was released on the 10th of May 1996, its director was Jan de Blanc, or Bonk, something along those lines anyway, it was made on a budget of 92 million US dollars, and made... 495.7 million US dollars in the box office. The cast in this movie consists of Bill Paxton, Jeremy Davis, Helen Hunt, Lois Smith, Philip Seymour Hoff, Alan Ruck, plus many, many others. So in this Twister movie, we follow a group of storm chasers uh, researching tornadoes during a severe outbreak in Oklahoma. There is another subplot line going on in this movie, which I'll get into actually in the movie review. But as general, Yes, this movie is entertaining. I am not going to lie, there are certain bits in this movie which I find slightly unrealistic, but by the end of this movie, I still find myself very, very entertained. And for a disaster movie, in my eyes, and this is my own personal opinion, it's probably one of the best disaster movies made. And that's just my personal opinion, and I'll get into those reasons right about now. So, like I said at the beginning of this video, this is probably my favourite disaster movie. Now, I generally like all disaster movies in their own right. I enjoy Deep Impact, uh, Armageddon, Day After Tomorrow. But this one stands out more for me because this is something which is actively happening every year. And there are teams of storm chasers out there trying to st study and understand the paths of tornadoes, how they present themselves every year to try and give people that even earlier warning that one is heading their way so they can get to safety and they can just save lives. And this is the reason why I enjoy this movie is because they wouldn't go into this completely blind. They would have probably consulted researchers or actual storm chasers to try and get an idea of what they do. Um, I also get there is a Hollywood <laughs> element into this movie as well which come from the slightly unrealistic parts of this movie which i'll get into but by the end of this movie i still am very very entertained i watched this movie a few days ago and basically i still get exactly the same enjoyment from it from the first time i watched it and i do believe i got this on vhs not long when it got released on vhs that is how keen i was to actually watch this movie I never actually went to the cinema, but just the experience of watching it for the first time, I still get exactly the same experience by the end of it. And there are reasons for this. It's just performances just in itself. There is one performance in this movie which is completely needless in every single way, which I'll get into in a moment. But Bill Paxton playing the lead role in it, I think it's absolutely fantastic. You are actually, you do get on board with his character very, very quickly. And you do believe as well that he can actually read a storm or what a storm is thinking. And I think it's a really, really added touch. And you do get behind him and get on board with his character. I think he nails this very, very well from start to finish. He is a very convincing performance which i seriously seriously did enjoy and it's exactly the same with helen hunt's character in here as well okay there is a subplot line going on between those two as in there is an impending marriage divorce which is the secondary subplot line in here which is a driving force in here for the reason why these two are together at this very specific time which I'm not saying is necessarily needed in this movie at all, but I get why the storyline is there because obviously they needed to get a certain certain character into a certain place at a certain time, which I think is a very, very nice touch and it adds in and it kind of blends in with the storyline. I'm not saying that storyline is necessarily needed in any way, shape or form. They could have got rid of that and just produced it all together and just solely done it as just a storm chasing kind of film but i also understand the reasons why but again helen hunt's performance in here is quite strong i very much enjoy it you've seen her passion of why she wants to chase tornadoes the reason why you get to see that from the very very beginning of this movie so they set up a backstory to her character as well straight away so you know her passion behind what she's doing 
again, it's an added touch. You get a slight backstory to Bill Paxton's character as well. Not a huge backstory. It's not as in-depth as in, say, like Helen Hunt's, but you still get a slight backstory to him. He's very, very good at his job, and you get to see that through this movie. Even with supporting um, performances in here as well, they all add their element apart from one. And this is where one of the first problems comes in for me for this movie is... Bill Paxton or Bill Hardy, Bill Hardy's character in his future fiance. She is completely needless in this movie. She doesn't add much to this movie apart from this person that doesn't know what the hell she's doing, and she's like a fish out of water. You could they could have quite easily not included her in this movie, but again, she is added in here because it's to do with the um, impending kind of marriage breakup or divorce. I get it, but she's not that good and she's completely useless. But the rest of the characters in here all add their element to this movie to make it just that little bit more Hollywood of a Hollywood movie or a blockbuster. None of the other performances in this movie actually bug me in any way, shape or form. They, like I said, they all add their element. Going on to visuals of this movie, I think they're absolutely fantastic. I really, really do. I think... The, you can see the money that was spent on here and you can also see and if you go into depth with reading about this movie you know that they were try they were struggling to actually shoot this movie because of weather conditions they had to over flood certain scenes with a lot more lighting to make things or the skies a lot more darker but what they did is actually really really good and that even includes the cgi now i said this before i'm not a huge fan of cgi but in this movie i think they nailed it really really well and they would have had to have used cgi in this one because of the context of what they were doing in this movie it is convincing i'm not saying it's 100 percent convincing but i do actually generally feel that the tornadoes that are in this movie are actually believable the other thing or sense i get from the tornadoes in here it, it is like an enemy which i cannot be stopped in any way shape or form and they just feel like they are watching it constantly it's just an enemy that they can't defeat and you do get that sense in this movie and technically in real life it is something that cannot be stopped in any way shape or form they captured that really really well there was I just think I just enjoyed the actual visuals of this. They were very, very believable. And I'm not a huge fan of CGI. I'm not I'm not saying it's it, it's just that in this movie they are quite believable and I just love the way it did. Uh, the the way they produced this or the way they showed it. You can see there was time and effort. It wasn't shoddy as such for its time. Knowing that this was nineteen ninety six, the special effects or the visual or the CGI in here is actually quite convincing. Other things I like about this movie is the fast paced tempo of this movie. Essentially this is Storm Chasers. So you're gonna get that kind of endure enduring You're gonna get that rush from watching what you see. And I do, you get that kind of anticip anticipating adrenaline adrenaline rush you know exactly what i'm trying to say but i'm just struggling to say it and i like that i like that feel of it as to the tension you know there is a sense of urgency in what they're trying to do in this movie there is an end goal which i'm not going to say in this movie review and just in case you haven't seen it but they have a sense of urgency it's a big day for them they know what they've got to do and they're going to do anything to get it and they'll put their own lives on the line basically to get this goal just to save thousands more just from that alone, I just makes it a very, very enjoyable movie for me and more of a realistic kind of disaster movie. I'm not saying that like stuff like Deep Impact or The Day After Tomorrow won't happen. All I'm saying is that this is actively happening every year in the US. We even get a few tornadoes here. All right, fair enough. They're not massive or anything like that. But I get this. I get the reason why they're storm chasers. And just to get a... Apart from the Hollywood kind of spin and touch on this, I get what they were trying to show you. Like I said, there were certain things in this movie which I didn't particularly enjoy or felt slightly unrealistic. One of them is being so close to a tornado and not actually getting basically sucked into this tornado. They make a very, very big and very serious point near the beginning of this movie that they not very many people can stand in the path of a tornado and not get sucked in but yet at the beginning sequence of this they're very very close to a, a tornado there is a sequence where they're driving in this ditch or kind of gully and the truck gets lifted up and they don't now if a truck can get lifted up by the force of the wind and they're only holding on 
by their own arm strength. It just makes certain bits in this movie slightly unrealistic. Um, that being said, it's not enough for me to, it, to put a dampener on this movie because essentially I do know they're putting this kind of Hollywood kind of spin on this. Um, so as a whole, as a general, this movie is entertaining for me. And if I was to rate this, I would give it a 8 out of 10. And the only reason why I'm giving this an 8 out of 10 and not a 10 out of 10 is because of the slightly unrealistic bits in here. They do make a very, very strong point of saying that there's not many people that can stand in front of a tornado and get sucked into the tornado. I don't know. I've never been close to it. I'm sure there's never there's many people that haven't and I certainly wouldn't want to go and stand in front of one to go and find out but there are just certain unrealistic kind of scenes in this movie that with the supporting kind of um acting or actress for Bill Harden's or Bill Paxson's character in here as being completely needless in every single way um is the reason why I'll give this an 8 out of 10 so on that note, please stay tuned for five bonus facts to do with Twister, which are coming up right about now. So, here we go. Fact number one. Twister was nominated for two Oscars for Best Visual Effects and Best Sound, believe it or not. I did not know that in any way, shape or form. And again, like I said in the movie review, I can quite believe that. They are actually really, really good for the year that they were coming out. 1996, you know, CGI, special effects, visual effects, and all that kind of stuff have advanced quite a lot in the last 20 odd years or so. 24, I believe it is. Yeah, it might be a little bit longer. But, you know, you know what I'm saying. For its time, the visuals in there were absolutely fantastic, in my personal opinion. Fact number two, Twister was the first mainstream Hollywood movie released on the then new home video medium of DVD. I did not know that either. And apparently when I was doing some reading later on, it was the last DVD to be released as well. So it must have been like a special edition or something along those lines. That was what I was reading, not 100% sure on that, but you know, I did not know that in any way, shape or form. I even thought DVDs come out in like 98, but obviously I was wrong, it was 96. Um, Fact number three, a recording of a camel moan was slowed down and used for the sound of the tornadoes. Um, I would never have known that either. I just thought it was like proper wind noises they used. But there you go. It's an interesting fact for me. So fact number four, Tom Hanks was originally, was the original choice to play the role of Bill Harden. Now, again, thinking of Tom Hanks playing that role, I generally don't think it would work. I really, really don't. And I generally like Tom Hanks as an actor, but I think where I've seen Bill Paxton in this role, the late Bill Paxton in this role, and I know I enjoy his performance, imagining Tom Hanks playing that that character, I just generally don't think it would work. And that's as simple as that for me. And I'm just this is my honest opinion. Fact number five, a jet engine from a Boeing 703. 707 was used to generate wind in some scenes and yes you can see that there is um obviously wind devices used in this movie <laughs> it has to be because essentially a tornado is a quite an aggressive wind surge which spirals and i don't understand the mechanics of a tornado in any way shape or form but i guess they would have to use something pretty hefty and extreme to basically show you or trying to produce the kind of wind speeds you probably get from a tornado to make it a little bit more realistic so and let me put it like this for you when i was reading through facts of this there is a lot probably more on this movie than some of the other movie reviews that i've done these bonus facts on so on that note please tell me what you think put it in the comments down below as normal hope you all have a great rest of the day whatever you're doing please take care and goodbye mm -hmm.